Hello, hello, hello. Maybe three times is a charm. I will wait to see if you can see me. Oh, brother. Hmm. This is just crazy. Oh, oh boy, that might have worked this time. I'm seeing a number this time. If you can hear me, maybe somebody could just type in a comment that they can hear me. Swipe left to reveal comments. So I'll just wait a moment. I apologize for being late. Could not connect. I'm seeing that there's numbers there now this time. So as soon as I get a little comment that says you can hear me, I'll start. Okay. Looks to be working right now. If somebody can hear me and is watching and you can see me. Oh, Lori just texted me that I'm live. So um, I guess that I have sound. So I just want to be sure because I do these in here. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. All right. Oh. Okay, here we go. All right. Sorry about the delay, guys. Sometimes technology does not work in our favor, but I'm glad you're here, and thank you so much for having me here. I appreciate this, Rip, and all the fine folks in Engine 2, and thank you guys for being here and for taking control of your health destiny, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. So if you're not familiar with me, my name is Chef AJ. I am the author of a book called Unprocessed. I'm the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, and I host a television show called Healthy Living with Chef AJ. And I did invite Rip to be a guest, but there was bad weather, and he was not able to be on, so he sent John Joseph in his place. But his dad, Dr. Essie, has been on, so I hope you'll check that out. So I'm here today to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects that I'm very passionate about, and that is called calorie density. So if you haven't seen my presentation that I gave at the Dr. McDougal Advanced Study Weekend from Fat Vegan to Skinny Bitch, I encourage you to watch it because then you'd know that even though I've been vegan for 40 years, for 35 of those years, I was what Dr. McDougal lovingly calls a fat vegan until I learned the secret to ultimate weight loss, which is calorie density, which I learned five years ago when I went to the True North Health Center in Santa Rosa as a patient. And I'd love to share with you some of what I learned today. I can't do my whole presentation because that would take an hour, but if you want to see it, then come to a live Engine 2 event. They're fabulous, and I get to give the whole presentation there. And the next one is just a few months away in sunny Southern California and Pasadena in March. Okay, so calorie density, what is it and why does it matter? Now, you might have seen this before. This is a magnet, but it's often a slide on our stomachs. Our stomachs are about the size of a cantaloupe. They hold about a liter of food, which is about 4.22 cups. And we have what's known as the mechanisms of satiation, lining our digestive tracts. We have calorie receptors, nutrient receptors, and stretch receptors. And so in order to feel full on fewer calories and lose weight, you need to make sure your stomach has fullness, bulk, which can only come from whole plant foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, which is what I call foods to the left of the red line, which are the foods you want to be eating during this challenge and probably for the rest of your life to maintain optimum health. So I want to show you some some visuals that might help understand because that's what really helped me understand these principles. It, the work done by Dr. Barbara Rolls, who is a researcher at Penn State University, she's done most research on calorie density than any other human. She has a laboratory where she studies human eating behavior, and I was privileged to interview her on my podcast. And what she learned is that human beings eat roughly the same amount of food per day. Now that doesn't mean I eat the same amount as say a triathlete or an Olympic athlete, but that most of us eat about three to five pounds of food per day. And if we want to continue eating the same amount of food, the only way to do that and lose weight is to lower the overall calorie density of the food. And if you do that by as little as 500 calories a day, you'll lose about a pound a week. You see, diets don't work because 98% of people that go on diets gain it all back within about two years, usually 66% within the first year. And the other 22% within the second year, often they gain back more weight than they lost because diets are based on some kind of deprivation, counting calories, counting carbs, counting points, eating thimble-sized portions and weighing and measuring your food on scales and not eating to satiation. But if you understand the principles of calorie density and apply them to your daily eating style, you can literally take in twice as much food and eat half as many calories. Now, if you're just seeing me for the first time, you'll probably say, well, you know, this is some 
thin lady, what does she know? Well, remember, I was fat for over 50 years of my life. I first became fat at the age of five, and by the age of 11, I weighed 160 pounds, and I was not yet even five feet tall. In my 20s, I ballooned up to almost 200 pounds, and while I don't have a photograph, I do have a pair of the shorts that I used to wear at that weight. The only photograph I have is me of, I hope you can see that, that's 165 pounds. So when I learned calorie density and that I could eat huge portions of potatoes, rice and beans and be slender, I was thrilled. So let's start out by showing you the calorie density of certain foods. Now, one of the foods that you're told not to eat on this challenge, which if you have followed a whole food plant-based diet or seen Forks Over Knives or read Dr. Esselstyn's wonderful book, Preventing for First Heart Disease, you know we're not gonna eat any extracted oils. And if you take a look at oil, this is 400 calories of olive oil. Now I'm using jars here that are four cups because our stomachs are about 4.22 cups. This is a very, very small amount of food. Now. Olives are about 400 calories a pound, and they have fiber and water and vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants and micronutrients. But you process them into the oil and you're left with this non-nutritive portion, which harms your endothelial cells, which has no satiety, no fiber, no nutrients. And it's pretty easy to see that this would not fill your stomach. Because remember, your stomach is about the size of this jar. But if you ate whole natural food, like let's say oats, well, look at how much more 400 calories gives you. Or let's say you wanted to eat some delicious brown rice. Look at how much more fullness and volume it gives you. Or let's say you wanted to eat uh, some corn. Look at how much corn you would get. Oh, how about beans? I mean, look at the difference between a processed food and a whole natural food. And imagine this was your stomach and what would fill you up more. So the problem with processed food is anytime you process a food, you make it calorie rich and nutrient poor. Now, what about flour? Well, here's 400 calories of flour, and here's 400 calories of the whole grain, the oats. Look what happens when I process. I did this myself. I took 400 calories of oats, and I ground it in my Vitamix, and look, I've decreased the volume by half. Well, why is volume important? Because if you want to feel full and satiated, satiation literally meaning the end of hunger on fewer calories, you need to eat very large volumes of food, maybe more food than you have ever eaten before in your life. And when you process a food, you reduce the volume. And volume is important in this way of eating because that is what creates bulk and that's what creates that fullness of, of satiety. So you wanna make sure that you eat not just whole foods, but your whole foods eaten whole with the fiber and the water intact. Because when you have fiber and water intact, you create bulk and bulk is what creates satiety. So I'll give you another example. Here's 400 calories of apples. I mean, look at this is four apples. I weighed these out. Uh, apples are 200 calories a pound, so two pounds of apples. I weighed them exactly at the scale at the store. This is 400 calories of apples. Could you even eat these many apples? I tried, I could only eat two. But what happens if I take these apples and put these in my juicer? Well, I get this much apple juice. And now I've removed the most important component of the food, which is the fiber. But can you see the difference if this was your stomach? Now fiber is important to every process of your body. It helps flush out toxins and prevents cancers. But where weight loss and satiety is concerned, fiber is the key to the kingdom. It's what makes you feel full. And so that's why you don't wanna do juices and smoothies if you're trying to lose weight. Now it's true that smoothies do keep the fiber, but they reduce the bulk and bulk is what creates satiety. The other problem with juicing is it raises your blood sugar too quickly. And when your blood sugar is raised quickly, what happens is your insulin is raised quickly and insulin is the hormone responsible for driving fat into the cells. Now, what about dried fruit? People love to put raisins and things like that on their oatmeal. It's not that they're unhealthy, but again, here's what happens. I have a machine called a food dehydrator and I took these same apples, well different ones, and slice them on a sharp blade of my mandolin and I put them in my dehydrator and this is how much dried fruit I get. Now it would be pretty easy to eat this much dried apple rings or this many raisins or dates, but look what happens when it's whole. And speaking of dates, you know there's nothing unhealthy about dates, they're a whole natural food, but look at the difference. This is 400 calories of dates 
and this is 400 calories of apples. So again, you want to eat your whole food and you want to eat it whole. I wish I had somebody here to help me hold these jars. <laughs> it's not easy doing it yourself. So you can see the difference between 400 calories of apple juice or applesauce, which is the equivalent of a green smoothie, and whole apples. Okay, so let's look at some other 400 calories examples. And the reason I'm doing 400 calories is because this magnet, which is quite well known in the plant-based world, it often appears. So what does 400 calories of vegetables look like? Well, I couldn't even get 400 calories of vegetables in a plate because this is 200 calories of vegetables. This is a non-starchy vegetable zucchini, one of my favorites. And so this is 200 calories of vegetables. And this is 400 calories of oil. How about nuts? We're telling you, you gotta eat nuts now. Everybody's nuts for nuts. Well, here's 400 calories of nuts, and here's 200 calories of vegetables. What's gonna fill you up more? Now, what about my favorite food, the potato or the sweet potato? Here's 400 calories. I weighed it out exactly. This is a roasted Hannah yam. Here's 400 calories of a sweet potato, and here's Excuse me, the phone, people are calling and texting while I'm doing this. Here's 400 calories of oil. Here's 500 calories of M&Ms with peanuts. You could have this whole one pound of roasted sweet potatoes. What else have I got here? It's kind of fun when you see all the jars together. Now, let's see what else I can show you here. Okay, oh, here, here is a vegan cookie. A vegan, right? So it's gotta be healthy, it's an oatmeal raisin cookie. 400 calories. So again, let's look at the whole natural food all together. The rice, the beans, the corn, each of these are 400 calories. You could probably eat all of them and still be slender and healthy. Whoops. So again, oil and nuts, 400 calories, not very much food. Oh, sugar. One of the things that I don't eat, I eat the fruit, the whole fruit, nothing but the whole fruit, so help me God. So here is 500 calories of sugar. This is maple syrup. You know, it's almost about the same as, as the, as the M&Ms. Now, I live next door to a store called Trader Joe's, and they sell this eight ounce bag of M&Ms, which if you go to the movies is pretty much the standard size. Well, guess how many calories in eight ounces of M&Ms? 1,200. At my weight, without exercise, that would be all the calories I get to eat in a day. So I could eat eight ounces of M&Ms, or for 1,200 calories, I could eat six of these unbelievably delicious Japanese sweet potatoes, one of my favorite kind. They're roasted, and this is three pounds. And I have eaten three pounds of sweet potatoes in a day. Now, if you're making comments or asking questions, for whatever reason, I can't see them right now, so what I'll do is later on in the day, when I'm done with work, I will be happy to answer them in person. I would love to be able to interact with you in person, but for whatever reason, I can't see the comments. So if you ever want more information, my website is eatunprocessed.com. I sell these wonderful magnets, which explain what I'm telling you there. So you can just look at them on your refrigerator. And every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, I do a Facebook Live broadcast that's called Weight Loss Wednesday, which you can see on my Professional Chef AJ page or on YouTube the day after. So let's see, what can I end with my very favorite visual? I kind of showed you that, uh, you know, non-starchy vegetables. Eat a lot of them, eat at least half your plate every meal, even breakfast, non-starchy vegetables or salads. They're only 100 calories a pound. You simply can't overeat on them. And really, when you understand calorie density and implement it in your daily life, you have no choice but to lose weight because most people, when they follow calorie density and not eat things that are hyper palatable and hyper concentrated and hyper caloric like the oils, the flours, the sugars, the high fat foods like the nuts and seeds. They can eat in a style called ad libitum as much as they want, as often as they want, whenever they want until comfortably full, which is not Thanksgiving full that you're so full you're going to throw up. So it's it's a wonderful system. I wish I had learned it before the age of 51 and I wouldn't have had to suffer tremendously my whole life with being obese and all the complications that have that go with it. So I guess that's what I got to say. I hope you enjoyed my little brief calorie density presentation. Thank you again for having me and for 
taking on this challenge. Anything you do to make yourself healthy in the new year is going to be great. And if I can assist you in any way towards your journey to optimum health, please let me know. I'm Chef AJ, and I really do believe that you all can have both the health and the body that you so richly deserve. Thanks, Rip. Thanks, Lori. And thanks, all the wonderful folks at Engine2. And thank you for being here. I'm Chef AJ. Bye.